we're on this. All right. So hello, hello everyone. This is uh, Preptober for 2023, and I am Sonia Doing. And a little bit about our group here. So um, uh, I started with NaNoWriMo many, many years ago, and it helped me get a novel done. Um, I'll talk more about what I'm doing this year. I'm not a liaison this year, but I am going to try to write several projects. Um, but uh, like I am the author of a series called the Idolmaker series and NaNoWriMo helped me, I always get emotional about this, helped me write this series. Um, and you know, once you get the first one done, it's much easier to do the others. Uh, also with us today, we have Katie Hamill, award-winning author of Meg Goes to America and <laughs> Meg and the Rocks. Uh, we also have A.K. Weller, author of Enemy Closer. We have Joe, who uh, is a member of my Crooky Quills group. And Joe, do you have anything? You have some stuff published, right? Yes, I do. The first novel in my series is out. Nice. What's it called? It's called Disappearance at Mexican Hat. That and it's dis soon to be followed by two or three others. The last name is pronounced Rebecca. In okay. If you didn't know, because I saw that you didn't say my last name. It's a word. <laughs> so, anyway. All right. Joe Rebecca. Thank you. And Courtney May is uh, one of our authors in the uh, Thrill Hers anthology. So, yep. All experienced writers here. And um, let's talk about ideas for stories. First of all, I know you are all working on projects. And uh, if if you don't want to put on your video, that's fine. But if you could put raise your hand, do you have, do those of you here have ideas for your stories that you're working on? And I yes. think most of you do. Joe, do you? Yes, okay. All right, so most of us here, I think all of us here have ideas of what we're working on. And Courtney's working on a series of short stories. I'm one of those people who has too many ideas. But real quick, how do you come up with a story idea? If you want to do NaNoWriMo in November and you uh, don't know what you want to write about, here's some quick ideas. Number one, real life is a great way to come up with. Real life is crazier than fiction sometimes. Um, do you have any quirky stories from when you were growing up or, um, you know, that you could use into fiction if you wanted to? You could do some fan fiction. So maybe take a character from a story or a movie that you feel needs more written about that character. Uh, you could do, um, I've written sh many short stories and I could take the characters from those short stories and write a novel about them. Um, if any of you guys have suggestions on how you came up with your ideas, I'd love to hear them. Well, the thing that happened to me this year that's going to be the basis for my NaNoWriMo project is I found a really weird thing in a thrift store. And I thought, what could I make out of this? What could I make out of this story and that actually turned out to be a really good inspiration for me i have a cast of characters that i'm already working with but um coming up with some really weird item and trying to create a story around it turned out to be fun that's fun i i think too uh another option i love the idea of taking an object um that also made me think of nyc midnight uh, you can go to their website and look at their current competition and see their assignments that they made to people, but they basically assign you uh, a genre, an item, and something else, I forget, and you could just look at the assignments that they assign people and pick one and use that to write your story around. So, for example, one time I was assigned, because I did sign up for their competition, and I was assigned uh, a shredder, a space station, uh, and something else. And so I wrote a short story, which ended up is, is leading into a new science fiction 
series that I'm going to write. So uh, sometimes just the tiniest little things can inspire you to a series, to a whole novel. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to move on to what if you have too many ideas? And I am one of those people, right? Because I have the science fiction series. I have, I want to publish, uh, you know, a writer's planner, which that's got to be done soon. Right. So I've got to work on that. Uh, I might have a middle grade nonfiction story to write. Uh, I have several novel ideas about a witch, another novel idea about, um, oh gosh, about a, um, a thief. And so lots of ideas. I would say, like, if you have a time limit, like particularly I have a planner, right? That's not really a, 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 a fictional project, but it's a project that I need to create. So I'm going to work on that first. But other than that, I think I'm going to look at my list and see what calls to me. What story do I really feel like I want to write, right? Especially if you're doing NaNoWriMo, you have to have some enthusiasm behind the project. Yeah. And you guys feel free to speak up if you want, as, as I'm going along, if you have anything to say about too many ideas. Because I feel like, especially as we get, as we're creating, we tend to, ideas start to bombard our brain. All right, next, I'm going to talk about character. Um, when you write your character, well, okay, first of all, I think you should get to know your character before you write your story. And this is something I will always say to everybody. If you have a plumber who grew up in New York City and a ballerina who grew up in California, you throw them both on a spaceship with evil octopus who are trying to kill them, they're both going to react slightly differently. They're maybe going to look for a different weapon. They're maybe going to think differently, right? They're going to say different words. So we need to know our character so we can throw them into this crazy, any other, any crazy situation and know how they're going to react. And you could do that by interviewing your character, pretend you're sitting across the table from them and talking to them and saying, you know, where did you grow up? Uh, what kind of food do you like? What's your favorite color? Um, you know, those sorts of questions. And also, I have a workbook. I have a character workbook. If anyone's interested, you know, you can email me at sonyadoing at gmail.com and let me know you want the character uh, workbook and I can send that to you. I'd say, uh, well, does anyone else have anything to say about character? Katie, I feel like you you would have something to say about character. Um, ask me a question. <laughs> well, what, you what inspired you to write Megan the Rocks' uh, her, that character as a strong young female character? Right? What what inspired you to write her that that way? Well, I think I'm very driven by um. A, being dissatisfied with what's out there and B, um, having my audience in my mind exactly the kind of reader that I want and thinking about who I want to introduce them to. And also, I don't know, I think I'm a propagandist. I, I want... Um, to communicate about challenges that people have in the world and the traits of character that are necessary to confront and and overcome them. So um, it bugs me when characters are disappointing, but, you know, characters are human, I was about to say. <clears throat> so you want characters to be complex and not perfect, but you also want characters to be something that readers can like and meet and feel inspired by right i love it yeah and i think and that is what inspired me too right because well i i inspired my own characters right so my fantasy series my main character is very much like me most my other characters aren't necessarily like me but leslie is 
And I didn't see that in a lot of books I was reading, especially Clive Cussler. Like I loved his books when I first started reading them, but then all his female characters were like just there for the male arc. And so I, I just, I couldn't read them anymore, you know? Um, so that's kind of why I wrote, I feel like that I wrote that series because I wanted to see myself in a, in a novel. <laughs> All right, I anybody? Had, oh, go ahead. I I had a, a thing that I did that's not so much about developing the character, but um, I really wrote the first book completely by the seat of my pants. And then I got about halfway into the second book and I thought, what color are those characters, is that character's eyes? What color are their eyes? And I actually had to go back to the first book and scan to figure out the answer to the question. So what I did that's been really helpful because now I've got 15 or so characters who occur repeatedly is I created a character sheet for each one. I didn't want to, I didn't want to interview them. I wanted just to observe them, but I wanted to make sure I had my facts straight. And so I have a, a sheet for each character that gives their full name, their nickname, their physical description, their relationship to other characters, and what stories they appear in. And it's actually been super helpful. This one character, I keep forgetting what color her eyes are, and I keep having to go back and check. But anyway, that has been a really helpful thing to me, and it's just a single, just a single sheet of paper. So it doesn't make me write a lot of extra stuff. So I like that. Anyway, no, I like that. And I mean, that's kind of how I use Scrivener um, for anybody who's thinking about Scrivener. I love it because there's a character section. And so I will put in each of my characters there. Um, and number one, it helps me remember how to spell the last name of one of my characters, especially especially if you're writing a series, keeping track of like how many dogs one of my characters has and what their names are and if they're male and female and yeah, keeping track of how to spell the names and right so for for me I have that in Scrivener so I could just scroll down on the left hand side be like okay this is how I spelled that person's name and this is how they're related to the story and that's yeah I like that and I like that if you're not using Scrivener you could totally use just a single sheet uh, of information to keep track. Yeah, I just use a, I have an accordion folder that I picked up at a thrift store. I've got a sheet for each character. I group them together in whatever book I'm currently working on. And, and then they have their own folders that they go back to. It's, I don't know why I didn't think of doing that earlier. When I finally <laughs> thought of it, I was like, you know, so anyway, it's yeah. a super helpful idea. It's just simple. You can Google, um, character sheet and find them online but i didn't like any of the ones i found online so i made my own but it's right. simple awesome yeah well and again if if anybody is interested in the character worksheet that i have just email me and let me know and also you know let me know if you're interested in being on any of my email lists i have uh plot is publishing so we publish books with strong female characters like like uh katie's books um and I also have my own email list, which is where you'll get a free couple of uh, short stories that lead into my fantasy series. Um, or I also run Women's Thriller Writers Association, so where I help writers write strong thrillers with strong female characters. So uh, if you're interested in any of those, let me know. Um, but yeah, I have the character workbook that can help you. And one thing in the character workbook, just to FYI, something to think about, and something I incorporated into characters that we do on social media, um, we often want to like the characters that we're reading about. So, and we do that in social media, right, or on our profiles, Social media experts often tell you, well, talk about, make sure to share something that makes you the same as everyone, right, in your audience, in your target audience. But then also talk about the things that make you different and talk about something that 
one may people may make people like you. So number one, my characters have something likable uh, right off the bat, because I know initially when I wrote Toy the Gods, I had someone, one of my early readers respond to me. I don't care if this character dies. I was like, oh my God, what? So uh, I rewrote it. Um, right. So what makes us like people or characters? Um, it could be that they love animals just like the reader does. You know, so a lot of my characters have animals. Maybe they have a cat, they have a dog. Um, you see them being kind to someone. Or, you know, we see something that connects us to that character. So one thing that makes them very much like our readers, something that makes them very different. So my characters are often very adventurous, like super adventurous. Um, for example, I play roller derby. So my characters tend to be extremely adventurous. Um, so think about when you're building your character, what makes them likable? Maybe they're an anti-hero. I know there's people who love the anti-hero stories. I'm not a fan of those. Um, but I like my characters likable. Any any comments about that? Okay. Oh, I'm have, oh go ahead. I have, a, I have a sort of a comment. Um, we just went through a review of my latest book and it was interesting to me that Katie reviewed it and she didn't like one of my characters and it's surprising to me how much I have thought about the fact that Katie didn't like that character and it caused me to to look at them again so I think it's really good when you're getting feedback on your writing to ask that specific question how do you feel about these characters? What, you know, how would you describe them? You know, because somebody else had read a previous book and said to me, well, I like so-and-so. She's a real know-it-all. She's a smart ass, but she's also kind of obnoxious. And I thought that was interesting because I hadn't seen that about that character. So I asked people to give me feedback on their emotional reactions to characters. And that has been helpful. That's a good idea. I like that. And I know I just oh go ahead just having having readers is great because you really can't tell what you're you know like when people you think you've explained something thoroughly and you haven't um or you're picturing something one way and then like you know a cover it, you just you just haven't done as good a job as as you want to and so when people can um point that out and say well I didn't get this I was confused by that you know just having readers is helpful but that's not for November for November just getting it out right the other Absolutely. thing I was going to say about about characters is if you're writing for um younger than adult then there are other considerations and sometimes those can be really hard like I tend to write mature th themes for young readers but they say that kids like to read characters that are at their age or slightly older than their age. And so kind of gauging the maturity level of your reader and how mature your content can be um, and how old, old your characters are can matter a lot if you're writing for not adults. Right, yeah, absolutely. Well, let me dive a little bit back into, you know, those of you doing NaNoWriMo and just focused on writing. I love NaNoWriMo for the fact that you are not worried about editing yet, right? You're just getting through, Get you want to get to the story from beginning to end. And the reason that that is fantastic is because if you keep going back and editing, then you never finish the story. It's much better. And I know some of you are listening and you're like, I can't do that, but you can, I know you can. Cause I did, I changed the way I write. It took a while. Um, I don't go back and edit anything until I finish to the end of the story. Then I'll go back and clean up my NaNoWriMo. Then I give it to a critique group. Then I go back and edit again. Then it goes back, goes to an editor, you know, so there's a lot of steps. The first step is just to finish all the way through. 
just keeping in mind, you know, finding a way to get to know your character, uh, you know, and thinking about how do you want people to feel about your character when they're reading the story? Um, I want to jump in on, Joe had mentioned planning a little bit, and I want to talk about the planner versus pantser just a little bit. So I have, in the beginning, I was always a pantser. I did not know the end of my story. Um, I would I would start my novel by knowing at least a few scenes in my head. Like I see them like a movie in my head. And I would start with those scenes and then I would connect the story and then I would write it to the end. Um, as I continued on my series, my first series, Idolmakers, I, um, I found in book three and four, I had to write the two books at the same time because there were storylines that connected very much um, through book three and four. So I had to plan. I still didn't know what the ending of the story was going to be. In my head, I thought maybe it was going to be a big battle. Totally ended up completely different. Um, so I am still what, what I would call a planter, like I'm kind of plan and I kind of pants um, but I know some people are not comfortable with that so my suggestions is if you like to plan is to create an outline whether that's using you know excel spreadsheet where you're you're outlining your and if you're doing a series I definitely suggest more planning than pantsing because then you're you, you can have a larger thread so book two I have a evil character show up who I know in the future is going to be big trouble but in book two he's kind of in the background you don't see you you see him his letters to the bad guy in the story but in book three and four he's a major component and so I had to plan more um, so think about if you're writing a whole series is there a way you can connect the books together uh, in a in a in a better way right other than just kind of pantsing it through um what else was i going to say oh uh scrivener like if you're using scrivener you could you could create a chapter or a scene for every uh as your outline you know your outline doesn't have to be static right you could move chapters around if you need to um and if you're going to write I don't write at the very beginning of the story. I usually start with the first scene in my head and I go from there. Uh, but some people can't do that. Some people want to start from beginning to end. And I totally get that. And whatever you guys have to say about planning or pantsing, I'd love to hear. <laughs> well, I I love planning except I can get down a rabbit hole of research and mm. it's important to stop researching and just write. But I think I'm mostly a pantser in that my absolute favorite phenomenon is when the characters start talking to me and telling me what's going to happen. And that's like my totally favorite thing. So I never want to plan in a way that forces my characters somewhere where they don't want to go. I like it. That that has been true for me too. The first book it was completely by the seat of my pants. I didn't, I didn't even know what the crime was until halfway through the book. Um, and I that was a really enjoyable process to me. And like Katie's saying, at some point the characters start talking. I mean, I was literally sitting there writing one night and one of my characters started creeping down a porch, peering in a window. And I thought, what the hell? He's supposed to be one of the good guys. But he wasn't, as it turned out. <laughs> and I was really shocked by that. And I think it was effective because I think other people reading it didn't know either. Um, but as the more I write, the more I become a planner, which I think is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I did the first one, not at all. The second one, kind of, sort of. The next time I came back to that series was a couple books later. And I had an absolute outline in mind. 
and I didn't have all the resolution, but I had a number of different elements that I wanted to bring together. So I had to plan them out. And this next one, again, I mean, I, I think Katie's right about going down the research rabbit hole. You've got to be careful about that. But it's it's whatever it's whatever works. I kind of think for first time nano writers, though, it's really great to just just leap off and dive in and see what happens. You know, you right. can always rewrite. I know to me for me, like writing every single day, you find uh, surprises like your character doing something you didn't plan right things happen that you didn't plan and you're like whoa <laughs> all right i want to talk oh well let's talk about research real quick i i definitely suggest that you do as much research as you can before you start writing uh do your best to organize it if you're using scrivener there's a place to put your research um there was even like you could put um website hyperlinks which was really cool because I was uh researching um in my last novel what was that uh relics of the gods I had to research my character doing research in New York City um, about Native Americans and so um, I didn't have time to look at it right away, but I had found the link to the museum there in New York City, and I just plugged it into the research section. And then when I was ready, I could go in there and look at it. So I thought that was cool. Um, but let's say you've done your research and you start writing your story, but suddenly you come up with a section that needs more research. My suggestion for NaNoWriMo especially is just to put asterisks or some kind of symbol that you know to come back to. Um, plug in what you think might be right or, you know, make a guess and write it anyway. And then you can come back later when you go through editing and do the research and, and fix that section. Let's talk about nonfiction real quick. For those of you, I mean, no, NaNoWriMo has traditionally been fiction, novel, um, but you don't have to use November, you know, to write a fiction. Maybe you're using it for nonfiction. I do suggest, you know, so for example, I have a book, which I will share a link, uh, and I put, an, I put the ebook on sale, um, How to Write a Novel. You know, and it's from my years of doing NaNoWriMo, the things I've told people over the years when I'm at events, you know, do this, do that, write about this, you know, things to keep people writing. Um, how I wrote it was I sat down and I brainstormed what were all the things that people would ask me when I was, we were sitting down at uh, write-ins, you know, I'm stuck, what do I do here, or, you know, I need another idea for next chapter and blah, blah, blah. So I just brainstormed and um, I'd say, you know, get out a blank sheet of paper and just think about the past, write down your ideas. If you're writing about, um, if you need to write in sequential manner. So I have a book about Amazon ads, running Amazon ads. Um, that is written from the beginning to the end, you know, step by step. So if you have a process that you want to write about nonfiction book, think about the process and write that as your outline and then expand on each of those. If you're doing a memoir, um, I'd say get out your research now, pull, pull together all your memorabilia, look and see if you have any stories on Facebook that you shared or whatever, or, you know, connect with your friends and family and ask them questions about what they remember about events. Um, put, and that doesn't need to be in sequential order either. Um, you could, as long as you have some kind of arc, it's still, you know, um, but it doesn't have to be sequential. Any questions, comments, or anything about nonfiction? Well, I have a trick I used to use when I did nano with students. When I have a big poster up on the wall, if you get stuck, it's the three Ds. 
Description dialogue disaster. And I should say too, right? When you have a disaster that you throw at your character, right? They have to make a decision and there has to be consequences to that decision, right? So um, yeah, so it creates more writing <laughs> and some of it very interesting. Well, let's talk about, oh, go ahead. I just wanted to pop in something when you were talking about research that one thing I'm doing for this year for Nano is that I'm using a bullet journal and you can Google using a bullet journal as an author. And it's really interesting because it gives you a way to organize all of your stuff, but it also gives you a way to throw in your random things. You know, like I was researching something last night and I ran across the colossal Olmec heads in Mexico. And I thought, oh my God, that's so interesting. And so I have a little symbol that's for research and I was able to just write that into my bullet journal and it'll be there when I get back to it. So that sounds interesting. Yeah. Okay, I'll add the bullet journal to the list. I am I am pasting. And so for those of you who see the YouTube, check out the description. Um, I'll have links in the description to all the, these are books that were, have been recommended by other NaNoWriMo's. Um, it includes oh, the book great. that I wrote. So we've got Save the Cat. Save the Cat Writes a Novel, um, Story, The Screenwriter's Bible, um, right? Screenwriting, even though it's not novel writing, I've heard screenwriting is great for hitting certain points in your story. So you might check that out. Writer's Guide to Active Setting. Um, I've got my How to Write a Novel. It's not 99 cents yet, but it, I just said it at 99 cents. So it should be ready for November. Um you got the story grid. I want to check out the story grid. That one looks interesting to me. And then how to write magical words. So there's some suggested books to help you kind of get into the thought of writing. But again, November, just want you to write. Yeah, uh, just get it done. And and my whole goal, I guess I should say this now. Um, I'm not necessarily doing NaNoWriMo. I am writing this month. And my goal is to write every single day and to get into more of a habit of writing. When, I, when I've when i done NaNo in the past, I get to the end of November and I close my laptop and I don't want to open it. I don't want to do that this year. This year, I want to feel happy about opening my laptop every single time and not feel stressed about reaching a certain word count, right, et cetera. So um, if you join my write-ins or whatever, we're going to do a few sprints, but not a lot. I'm all about getting people into habits. So we'll talk about my schedule. But while we're thinking about it, if you have schedule ideas, so I'm gonna I'm gonna schedule some in-person write-ins in Albuquerque. I'm gonna schedule some online Zoom write-ins. Um if you can put in the comments, those of you who are here, put in the comments what days and times work best for you for Zoom, for in-person. For those of you who are watching this on YouTube, feel free to email me um, and I will post the schedules out on the, the Facebook groups. I'll email you. If you email me what times work for you, I'll let you know what dates and times I did pick. Um, okay. And I wanted to talk about story arc and soggy middles uh and Dita wanted me to definitely talk about soggy middles i feel like okay first of all story arc you your character generally has a flaw and you want to challenge your character's flaw throughout the story so uh and and as uh kim says this is change like a story arc is change that happens throughout the story. Whether that change is a disaster that happens to your character where they have to make a decision and have consequences. Um, I'll use an example. So I think it's book two. Yeah, book two. One of my characters receives uh, special powers, magical powers from uh, an Inca god. And during the storyline, she's learning to use them. The problem is, the flaw here is that 
not just the powers, she received his ego as well. And so she's having to deal with his ego and being all powerful at the same time. She's dealing with this over and over and over again. And we get to this high point where she almost kills people. She she brings this flame. She's going to kill them all. And then she's like, wait. So we challenge the flaw to the greatest point and then break it, right? Or she has to make a decision. She could have killed everybody and she bec- she could have become a bad guy. But that's not my, de- that, that wasn't the decision she made. She pulled back the fire. She's like, no, this is not me. I'm pushing this ego aside. And I am, I am AJ Blue Horse, you know. Um, so you want to push the character's flaw in my point, in my point of view, that's, that's a way for an arc, right? Um, I'm just thinking else, what else I wanted to say about that. And if you get to that soggy, if you feel like your middle is getting soggy, here's some things to think about. You could add a twist. Um, maybe there are other subplot. Like I know when I'm writing a novel, I have a lot of characters. There's a lot of subplots going on. Subplots meaning every character has their own desire. And those desires most often do not mesh, right? So some sub character could suddenly come up and get in the way of the, of the protagonist because their desires are at opposite ends, right? So the twist could come from a, a, a minor character who's now a little more important or you could add a new character who adds a uh, depth oh, or your care one of your bad characters could suddenly change their mind and become a good character right so adding a twist um adding an basically an unexpected change throwing my favorite is throwing my character in the worst possible position that they can find themselves at um so book three, Leslie, my main character, Leslie Kicklighter, the end of a long day, she's on the ship uh, on the Amazon River and she's outside and she's just taking a break and she's in her pajamas and I don't think she's wearing shoes. I can't remember, but um, that was at the point where I was like, what do I do with this? This feels too, so- this feels a little soggy. This feels a little boring. Well, um, the bad guy uh, tricks her. She falls off the ship. She is pulled down the river quite a ways before she can get up to the to the edge. And she's got to walk back to the ship, not knowing if she's walking among uh, caiman, you know, which are alligators or snakes or what she's going to step on next. Right. So she's got to make her way. And it created another layer of the story, too, for her getting back onto the ship and for people helping her and and this whole thing, knowing that someone bad was out there to get them. So, you know, so throwing your character in the worst possible position can create an interesting layer to the story. Anything else anybody wants to say about arcs soggy middles any of that and joe i don't know if you're still there what was the name of that book you were talking about forgot Uh uh-oh All right, she's not there, but I'll get her when she comes back. Um, I'm sorry, I'm back. Were you talking about me? Yes, ma'am. Um, oh, you had mentioned sorry. a book that you had used. What well, uh, I I I thought oh, I was gonna. Bullet, what is the it? Bullet journal. Bullet the journal. Bullet. Thank you. Yeah, it's I was like, actually. Bu- I'm sorry. It's a method for journaling that people use for all kinds of different things and I was familiar with it you can there's stuff on YouTube bullet journaling there's a the guy who kind of originated the concept has a channel 
which I think is just called bullet journaling. Okay. Here's the thing about this guy. He's a little bit pretentious. <laughs> and so I find him a little hard to listen to. But his basic ideas are are very sound and they're very simple ways. It's basically what the general idea of it is that you're going to use this to keep track of everything that you need to do, everything, every event that happens to you and your reactions. But what's more interesting to me is how to use that for writing purposes. And you can still intersperse other stuff. It's it, don't be put off by it if you if you check it out <laughs> take the time to really listen and check it out before you decide that it's just too crazy and too involved it's actually pretty simple so that would be my suggestion you know google bullet journaling and go to youtube okay i like it all right i want to talk a little bit about world building um one of my favorite world builders is Julie Zernita. I've got her books right here. I, these are my favorite. Um, these are the Species Imperative series. So if you love sci-fi, I would totally suggest getting them. The, the thing about, okay, again, you're just going to write your story. You're not going to worry too much about this. But things to think about, if you're building a world, use the first chapter for your nano to write the background of your world. What is it like? How, what kind of money do they use? Um, you know, are plants purple? You know, think about what are all the details that you want to see in this world. When you publish your story, you want, you want to get rid of that first chapter, right? Because you want to, you want to bring the reader into the story right off the bat. Um, so right, the first 50 pages or the first five pages, you know, they often say are what is going to pull in your reader. So you want that first page of the book to be like, um, you know, Cindy looked out over the purple water and, um, noticed the, the blue moon was, was rising and turned to head back to campsite. You know, so you want to get them a feel of where your character is, that it's not Earth, right? Or maybe it is Earth, and it, and she's she's in a 1968 car with like a tape deck, you know. So give them a feel of where they are, but don't do it by saying, um, I'm trying to think of a bad example and I can't come up with one, but basically you want to jump them into the story versus explaining the world. And I, I definitely suggest like looking up authors who are really good at that, at world building. Julie Zernina is just my favorite. She's like, I think she's brilliant. Okay, let's talk about organizing and getting ready to write. Uh, we talked about a little bit, you know, um, using Scrivener, using documents, uh, an accordion file. Uh, I'm very much uh, an online person usually, except for my story ideas and things that I might add to my stories. I have a notebook for that, which I can't find this morning, which may not be a good, good example. <laughs> you can lose your notebook. Um, but, I, and I also organize myself via a paper planner. That's me. Um, but if I am getting, for example, um, the planner is different. So I'm not going to talk about that, but let's say one of my projects is to Okay, I'm going to use it. I'm going to rewrite. So I have a memoir about my time in the Civil Air Patrol as a, I, I got my pilot's license and I uh, was in search and rescue, you know, from the time I was 13 until 25 or something. And my uh, Kirky Quills group have suggested that I rewrite the story is first of all memoirs are really hard to sell there are so many memoirs out there but if you have a more targeted market you're more likely to sell your story so 
the idea is to take the story that's already written, change it to be a uh, targeted towards middle grade. Um, maybe even look at the Girl Scout flying badge and see if it's something that would mesh with that. Something I could, you know, hey, Girl Scouts, I've got this book kind of thing. So let's say you're taking a book and you're rewriting it. Um, I am going to, I have this book already in Scrivener, right? But it's in its current form. But what I'm going to do is I am going to, first of all, do research on middle grade. So that's my research part. Look at middle grade books. I have an example here somewhere. Uh, Katie's book. Look at middle grade books. Look at how they're written. Uh, look at the Girl Scout requirements for the flying badges or whatever badges they have for error, for error or whatever. See if there's something that I can write into the story that would meet that requirement. Um, so I'm going to do my research. I'm going to take a lot of notes. I'm going to put that in my Scrivener to organize it. And then I'm going to go chapter through chapter, and I'm going to make notes per chapter. Um, I'm going to make notes as to what new chapters I need to add. I'm going to make notes as to what photos I have, what photos I could add to the story. So I'd say, you know, think about what the process is you need to do. What research do you do need to do for your book? Do you need to do police procedure? There's tons of eBooks on police procedure. There's a great book about FBI agents, what they do and don't do. Um, and of course, I forget uh, the woman who wrote it. <sighs> I feel bad about that. But so if you're doing procedures, if you're doing and even this, if you if you're interested in how people do things, reach out to someone who does that thing and say, hey, I people love to know that you're writing a book and they want to help you. Night. I mean, I've never met anyone who said no to questions. Um, I, I even brought a bunch of scientists together to talk about my sci-fi book. Um, and they gave me some fantastic ideas that I had never even considered. So think about connecting with experts, pulling that research together. Um, other ways of organizing, like maybe you love paper, you know, using a notebook to organize your thoughts, but I would suggest using uh, tabs so you know which, what tab is what information you pull together. Excuse me. Um, for those of you who don't like organizing on the computer, any other suggestions, ideas about organizing? One thing that I do is that I keep, this is not so much a nano thing, but I do it very nano, is I create a cover, even just a dummy cover, and oh. I start a binder. And as I'm writing pages, I just print my pages out and punch them and put them in there. If they're out of order, if they're total BS, whatever, <laughs> they're in there. And it shows me what I'm doing. And that's become a really big thing for me. Like, one I'm currently working on, there's the cover. Inside every page, all my notes, and each one says, you know, this was printed on this date, and this is, you know, whatever. Is feedback is relative to it. But I find it really helps me to physically have them together. That's so, nice. And the well, other and thing I did is I bought a laser printer because it's so much cheaper to print your <laughs> pages. It made a really big difference. When I got a laser printer, I suddenly was like, oh, my God, I can print them all. It's no big deal. So <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And that, that yeah. reminds me, too, of um, in the past, I've done uh, a board on Pinterest, you know, of ideas, images of characters, um, right? And if you want to create your own cover, you could go to canva.com and play around with book covers to create your own fake cover maybe or maybe you're making a real cover if you want real covers you should talk to ak weller you can email me uh or look up ak weller and look up her website she did the thrill hers cover she's freaking brilliant um yeah so creating a cover to inspire the story or creating a pinterest board or one year i actually i had a leftover piece of <laughs> you're welcome AK Weller because it's true um to uh 
I create, I had a leftover board from a project, a, like a four by two or something. I wrapped it in metal and made it into a giant, oh, and cork. I had wrapped it in thin metal and the cork in other places. So it, was, it, it leaned against the wall. It was a giant board for my story I was working on. So I had clips, newspaper clips and all kinds of and images of my characters and you know all kinds of things so right there's all, depending on I'm a very visual person so that kind of thing helps me to kind of focus on certain things but yeah I love those ideas thank you you're welcome no I've done yeah. so much research and then like lost it or can't find it again or oh I'm gonna take both of those to heart <laughs> The one thing that I do that is helpful is clean my desk. It's a late October ritual. Um, and I take a before and after picture, but I get all the junk off of my desk so that I start November one with a clean slate. Nice. This and is even another, um, this is another research idea. Um, I don't know about you, but I have a lot of Facebook friends that I don't even know. Um, I know them through my glass working. So, I mean, like hundreds of people that I only know because they also do glass work. But what I've taken to doing is posting on Facebook, asking for a character. And then would this character do this or that? You know, I mean, I've got a character who's British and it turns out that I've got several online friends who are British and so I can ask them would she say this or wouldn't she and like like Sonia is saying people love to talk about what they know about you know I mean I get a whole big lively conversation about the difference between a cracker and a biscuit if you're British <laughs> and it turned into it exploded like 50 <laughs> comments and I'm like, wow, you guys have a lot to say about this. And I and I found a trick that works to make the thing that I wanted to do work. So, you know, canvas your, your social media. And it reminds people that you're an author. You know, so that's good. <laughs> Right. When I wrote, yeah, evil nuns from space, uh, I needed, so the monster truck drivers are the heroes in the story and I needed a bunch of monster truck names. So I posted on Facebook, give me some monster truck names. I mean, real or imagined, whatever. And people went wild. It was awesome. That's very cool. I love that idea. Yeah, I, <laughs> I did that. that I did that for Spanish words too, because I don't speak Spanish and and I had, I had specific, like, I had little ladies who are all sisters gossiping about an event that happened several decades in the past. So it was really important to me to know what slang they would use as opposed to a younger um, Hispanic speaker um, and how they would talk amongst themselves. And I collected a lot of suggestions and I eventually got the right phrase that one of them would say. Nice. That is great. Well, and let's talk about, so language, right? My my books had a lot of Spanish occasionally in it too. And I, I reached out to a, a person who actually, Spanish was, he took Spanish as a second language throughout college. Um, I, you know, and so he helped me. I had some, um, and then, oh, and then when uh, my publishing company, when we published Gramitas Tortillas, we wanted well, I wanted, I felt, so the story, um, and this is an option for you guys too. So, Gramitas Tortillas is a children's book written by Mar Maria Gomez. And it's about her growing up with her grandmother who always was, you know, cooking tortillas for the family or for friends, for anyone who dropped by in the morning, you know, here, I have some tortillas. Um, and I felt because it's it's from it's written from a, you know, from a young girl's perspective, small town, that it would connect with more readers if it was also in Spanish. So the, um, she didn't know Spanish. So she, she reached out to a family member, you know, in, Spanish is a first language and they wrote the story for us in Spanish. Um, so, you know, if you're writing a children's book, there's another idea. If you want to keep writing throughout NaNoWriMo and you've already finished the children's story, 
you could think about what other language could you add to the book itself and and make it more sellable as well too. You also did a lot of careful consulting when you were using um, Native American or First Peoples characters. Right. Oh, that's something important to mention, right? Beta readers, um, right? Because when I wrote book one, Toy of the Gods, I had no idea when I started that it was going to be a sequel. I thought it was just going to be a one-off. I'm getting all emotional about it again. Um, I thought it was going to be a one-off story. But at the end, I'll, I'll tell you all the ending. Um the Inca God gives his powers to AJ Blue Horse, who is a minor character in book one, but she hasn't become a major character because she just inherited these powers. And so here I am writing uh, about a Native American Navajo woman, which I live in New Mexico. I know a lot of Navajo people, but obviously I am not Navajo. And I was uncomfortable with it at first, but I also... Like I changed her 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 character basically, she isn't completely from the the Navajo Nation. Like she grows up there a little bit, but then she moves to New York City, so she's kind of, you know, I wouldn't say more like me, but she's not completely Navajo, a Navajo person who grew up on the res and stayed on the res. So what I did was when I wrote the first book, I went out to my uh, Navajo friends and said would you be willing to read this uh, give me feedback I want to make sure I'm treating her with respect that her character feels realistic um, and all of them came back and the only thing they came back and asked me to not do which was to put any real ceremonies in the book so all ceremonies in the books are I have I did not do any research on them. I just made them up. So they are fiction just as long as just along with the story, right? It's fiction. Um, but they otherwise they gave me the green light on the on the character. And another thing I want to say about that, if anybody's watching this or you guys here are not sure about writing a character who is not you, the thing is if we write if if I wrote a book with only characters filled with me that would be a really weird book right um we have to be able to use our imagination our research our judgment to write other characters and especially those characters i want to see um i want to see diversity in the books that i read and so i want to write diversity in the books i write so don't feel like you just have to write yourself, but please do the research. Find beta readers if you can. Well, find beta readers. You can find them. And um, get input to make it an, a really honest, good story. I've okay. gotten, yep, I've go gotten brave. I, so the, everybody, don't, like when you start writing, they're like, write what you know. But after after several profoundly moving and upsetting incidents of police violence um for about a year my characters all turned black my i ended everything i wrote had an african american character in it and i questioned myself a lot about that is this cultural appropriation i'm not writing from what i know i'm not writing from lived experience and I've reached a place with that where I now think, like Sonia, maybe, um, writing from what you know is a cop-out or it, it, it keeps you from growing as a writer. If you're a good writer, um, you can and want to try to manifest experiences that are not your own. And you want to be deft about writing perspectives and from perspectives that are not your lived experience. That's what I think about that now. Yeah. Well, and I think too, you, and maybe you don't need to think about this now while you're writing your novel, but when you go to rewrite, one of the things I was thinking about too, when I wrote book one, I realized all of my South American characters, well, were kind of bad guys. So Sun, he ends up, he's, he's pretty much dead because he gets taken over by the Inca character. So he's not around. Uh, Simon, who's the banana plantation owner with a secret to keep, he's a bad guy. 
So I had to bring in, I wanted to bring in a representative of South America who was not a bad guy. So Miguel, who is son's brother, was written in at like the final editing stage. Um, and I think he brings, he brings depth to the stories, not just there, but also along the way. So thinking about who are you have representing your bad guys? Can you bring someone in to represent the good guys in that same area, right? We don't want to make everyone look bad. Um, so thinking about putting some balance. I had right. the experience of um, of writing a character and not being sure what he would do in a certain situation and I had sort of an unexpected feedback but I I sought out a person that I know who is the same general ethnicity as this character although not exact and we had a great big discussion about what the cultural impact would be of his choices and I had to modify him to to persuade my expert that he would plausibly do the thing that I had him doing. And one of the ways that I modified him, Sonia, like you said, is I made him not all one ethnicity. I made him a mixture of different experiences. I had him grow up away from the reservation. I gave him a bunch of different ancestors from different cultures. And it actually, one of the things that happened as a result of that is that he became a much more interesting character because now he's, a mixed breed you know now he now he is Navajo and English and French and has all this different background and it's made him a better character not because of the mixture but because I was forced to really look at how a, a, <clears throat> pardon me at how a traditional person would view the various options that this character has to resolve and i and I figured out that I couldn't write him the way that I thought I could write him, even though he seemed very real to me. And you know? also that's that's real helpful feedback. And sometimes it'll really not only improve your writing, but you'll find out something you didn't know about your own character. So cool. All right. And I just want to let everyone know that my book is now the ebook is now 99 cents. It just finished publishing. So if you're looking for a novel, e the ebook, uh, The Five Minute Author, How to Write a Novel, uh, is on Amazon for 99 cents. So, and if you read it, if you use it for NaNoWriMo and it helps you, please leave me a review. I've got five ratings. I want at least 10 before I start doing ads. So, there, thank you. Um, tips on surviving NaNoWriMo, right? I am not doing NaNoWriMo. But I've done it for many, many years. I think eight years altogether. Um, my tips on getting 50,000 words by the end of the month. Again, don't do your research in November. Do it now. Or as soon as you see this video, go and do your research. Organize it. Get it ready. November 1st. Start writing. Um, and... You want to get at least 1,500 to 1,600 words a day. And if you have, if you need to, find time at lunchtime. Get up early before you normally get up. Write for an hour. Um, sprint. You need to um, embrace the sprint, which is basically set a timer for 20 minutes and write as fast as you can. And you, you need to embrace it because it will get you words faster on the page. Um, go to events. If you have a local liaison, they'll schedule events. I know those of you in Albuquerque, we still don't have an official liaison. I'm sorry. Um, there is one in Rio Rancho who is holding events out at the Rio Rancho library, I think. Um, I will schedule events. I will put the link to the November writing table. Um, yeah, and for those of you here, A.K. Weller, Courtney, Joe, uh, Kate, Katie, um, if you want to join some online or in-person events, let me know what days and times work for you in the chat, um, and I'll incorporate those into my plan. Um, yeah, but surviving, it helps to 
the, the reason I suggest going to events is that if you have a liaison that makes you sprint, it helps because you're writing, right? Um, I will say some groups tend to talk a lot. I, I'm not one of those people. If you join my online sprint writings, we will chat a little bit. I'll take questions if you're stuck, but we'll mostly get into writing. Anyone else have any tips on surviving November? <laughs> Getting through and writing? I, oh, I also put, go on Facebook and I warn my friends and family, you're not going to see me very often. I'm going to say no to most events. Um, you know, Thanksgiving, I have to do Thanksgiving usually, but um, but I kind of warn everyone up front that I'm going to kind of be a hermit in November. My biggest tip for surviving NaNoWriMo is don't delete anything. Yes. Thank you. Do not delete anything. Even the words, what the fuck am I going to write today? Pardon my language. Just don't delete <laughs> anything. Keep it all and you will get there. Exactly. And even like maybe you're like I like I mentioned earlier, you're writing the background to your stories or the world building, what the world looks like. Even though you're not maybe going to put that in your finished product, if you publish, that's still part of your nano piece, right? And I'll write whole chapters and then I'll suddenly decide this is, I can't use this. So I'll go to the top and I'll say, delete this in the, in January, right? But but you leave it for, for nano because you wrote it. You wrote it during the month of November. It counts. Another tip is don't stop for the day at the end of anything. So stop in the middle of something, even in the middle of a sentence, so that you have like this opening to dive into the next day rather than, okay, where am I going to go today? You know what I mean? You're already halfway through something and you've left it unfinished and unhinged so you can get right back in. Courtney, I love this. She says, give yourself grace. If you miss a day, don't give up. Life happens right? Just start fresh the next day. And I know I have, and absolutely, I, I have found, you know, there's days where, you know, something's going on with my dog or my dad or my sister or my niece, and I've got to go and take care of them or take care of life. But then, you know, Saturday rolls around and luckily I've got a whole Saturday where I can sit and write and kind of catch up, right? So definitely, and, and that's also why I'm not doing official NaNoWriMo. I'm not, this year, I'm not focused on getting 50,000 words. Um, I just want to write every day, whether that's just five minutes one day, 10 minutes the other, and maybe five hours the next day, right? So as long as I'm making progress, and the reason I say this, as a published author, the more books you have, the more stories you have, the more you have out there on Amazon, on draft to digital the more you get an audience, the more money you'll make. My goal is to be a full-time author um, as well as support other writers. But meantime, I work catering jobs. I work other odd jobs. I do technical writing. I want to get rid of all that. But the only way to do that is to be more consistent with my writing um, and get more work out there. So that's why this is my goal for this year. Any other any other tips on surviving? Write in days. Okay, so uh, Katie is giving me some write in days. I'll take a look at those um, when I do my schedule. Thank you, Katie. Um, one thing I want to mention: when you're done in November, when you're done writing your novel, find a critique group. We kind of talked about critique groups. Um, don't share your story with your family or friends, especially if you are a new writer. And I'll tell you why. Because writing is a journey. And when you're a first-time writer, your first novel, you're going to make a ton of mistakes. I'm getting emotional again. <laughs> um, you're going to make a ton of mistakes. Friends and family don't understand that writing is a process, that it's a journey. You give them your book it's going to be terrible. I will, a NaNoWriMo novel is terrible. I will tell you that right now, but it's also beautiful because you finished writing a novel and you've got something to work with. Your family and friends are going to look at it. They're going to do one of two things. They're either going to be like, okay, this, this is terrible. 
I don't think you should write anymore. <laughs> you should not be a writer. And you're going to be like devastated. Or they're going to be like, oh, this is great and give it back to you because they don't want to tell you it's terrible, right? Um, which doesn't help you anyway. So when you're done with your nano novel, what you want to do is you want to try to clean it up a little bit, but then you want to find a critique group. A critique group is a group of fellow writers, people who, are, who understand the writing process, who are going to be honest with you, but they're also going to encourage you, right? They want to give you positive feedback as well as specific feedback. So you could create your own critique group, reach out to other nano people. Um, if you're on the nano website, maybe on the forums, say, hey, in January or whatever, I want to organize a critique group. Um, make sure you have rules right? Authors are not there to defend their story. They're there to be a sponge and listen because we're all there in that critique group to support each other. Um, what else? Um, and you want to give specific feedback. So I, I remember being at, in the old days, our critique group used to meet at Frontier in Albuquerque. A group, I got there early and there was a group behind me that was a critique group and they went around the table and said, oh, it was great. It was great. I, I enjoyed reading it. It kept me interested. That stuff does not help you become a better writer. Um, what you need is to say things like, well, when I got to page 10, I hesitated because the character seemed to do this thing that was out of character. Or I read this and it didn't make sense to me. Or... Uh, you know, things like that. Be specific. Um, I know I have, one of the things I've learned, well, I've learned so much from a critique group. Um, but like, for example, I always used to say she started to run. He he started to read. No. Okay. So I've gotten rid of that. I don't use that anymore. So I've learned a lot about myself as a writer. Um, so number one, you can create your own critique group. If you want to check out Kirky Quills on Facebook, I'll have the link. Um, I also have Women's Thriller Writers Association. That one's a paid membership. And uh, we write thrillers with strong female characters. And whew, I'll have links to all the books we uh, that we kind of talked about. Anything? And uh, are there any other questions that you guys have with what your projects you're working on or anything else you want to add? I don't think there seemed to be anything. So I'm going to stop recording. And anybody who's watching this, if you have questions. Oh, Joe has something. I, I do, which is you're recording it. Where are you going to post it? I am going to post it to YouTube, to my YouTube channel. Um, but I will also share it to Facebook. So you will see a copy of it. And it will also have... Um, sections so when you when you hover over the video on youtube it'll show you where we talked about ideas where we talked about nonfiction, all that stuff okay 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 because you were something you were talking about in the beginning and i guess my brain wasn't on yet and i was like wait 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 i want to see that so i want to go back and look at the first few minutes at least again absolutely yeah this will be available for everybody um thank you for so much no problem. This I love doing this stuff. I'm going to stop recording now.